they're offering their well wishes, their support for the Pelosi family, but they're also using this as an opportunity uh, to shine light on this very concerning and worsening problem, which is uh, this rising uh, uptick in the number of violent threats against lawmakers, something that we've been seeing uh, for over four years now, but that's gotten so much worse in this hyper uh, politicized time post January 6th. We know those numbers uh, have more than tripled just in the last four years. Uh All right. Hello, true seekers. Today, we're going to touch upon the Paul Pelosi story. Uh, here, you get a sense of how the story is being um, framed politically. Washington Post attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband follows years of GOP demonizing her. It's a headline. The U.S. Speaker of the House herself, Nancy Pelosi, has released a statement about 12 hours ago at this point. This day, 10-30, 2022. Go ahead and read to you her, her statement. Dear friends, sadly, a violent man broke into our family home yesterday morning, demanding to confront me and brutally attacked my husband, Paul. Our children, our grandchildren, and I are heartbroken and traumatized by the life-threatening attack on our pop. We are grateful for the quick response of law enforcement and emergency services and for the life-saving medical care he is receiving. Please know that your prayers and warm wishes are a comfort to our family in helping Paul make progress with his recovery. His condition continues to improve. You know, I'd just like to interrupt and say I'm glad and grateful for that, that he's getting better. Like anyone else on the outside, I do have some questions. Okay, I'll continue. We are also comforted by these words in the book of Isaiah. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We thank you for your prayers and warm wishes, as well as the work you do to strengthen our democracy. Sincerely, Nancy Pelosi. So overall, I'll say it's a nice statement that's not obviously politically pointed. But you see here in the basic facts given in this letter, she says a violent person broke into the family home yesterday morning, demanded to confront her, and brutally attacked the husband. Now, are there any issues at all with this statement? A left-leaning political commentator, Molly Jong Fast, states, This exchange between Hillary Clinton and Elon Musk should kill any remaining confidence advertisers had in the platform. And with that, it might kill a bit of the influence that you have on this platform too, Molly. And so Hillary, who hesitates not at all to politicize anything, states, the Republican Party and its mouthpieces now regularly spread hate and deranged conspiracy theories. And in this, she basically posts a LA Times article that describes the allegedly far-right beliefs of the person, David DePape, who's responsible for the attack. And you know, while we're on this Gematrix website, I'll just briefly show you this. Marcus Cohen, who some of you may associate with Steinbart Media Group, pointed out to me the gematria for this person's name, David DePape, which is 853, 522, and 87. Corresponding with some of these search returns, you have absurd lying, their defense is too fast, too good to be true, cloaked object, has terms that appear under this guy's name. That is very interesting. I don't look at much as coincidence anymore, so I assume that this is a message from the beyond or maybe from us. On this topic, I'll just briefly segue to a message from Elon Musk. Ligma Johnson had it coming. And this is with regards to a fake firing at Twitter that went viral. I looked this whole phrase up and came across some interesting terms that mean something to me, so I'll go ahead and share with you. Um, so a few of the returns here, when you scroll down the page for 1206, is this term, middle of the page. Matreya is an antichrist. And then two down, you have John Teeter is Q. I thought this was interesting. On my YouTube channel, I have this video uploaded about a year ago that's titled 17 Boards Time Travel John Teeter Cryptic Vid. Within that video that has a title of John Teeter in it, there's a mention of Maitreya in the same video. Um, both John Teeter and Maitreya were aliases that used for previous social media accounts before Spirit of the Meadows. And the references are in this video. And I was informed that basically the Gematrix website had crashed and reset and now we have this so i'm not sure if this is deliberate by the creators of their website or this is some type of accident but the number of search terms that results in rankings of each of these words uh, it no longer appears uh, in the completed state as previously all right so now back to our story 
I think we can sort of piece out the nuggets of truth and separate it from the dross. But it's looking how the reporting had evolved over time and specific statements made. I created a log in my Twitter account here. Let's take a look at these things. Before we do, I just want to review some terms here. Yeah, fourth generation warfare. Fourth generation warfare, or GW, is conflict characterized by a blurring of the lines between war and politics, combatants and civilians. The term was first used in 1980 by a team of United States analysts, including paleoconservative William Lind, to describe the warfare's return to decentralized form. In terms of generational modern warfare, fourth generation signifies the nation state's loss of their near monopoly on combat forces, returning to modes of conflict common in pre-modern times. The simplest definition includes any war in which one of the major participants is not a state, but rather a violent non-state actor. Classical examples of this type of conflict, such as the slave uprising under Spartacus, predate the modern concept of warfare. The elements are complex and long-term. Terrorism is a tactic, a non-national and transnational base, a direct attack on the enemy's culture, including genocidal acts against civilians. All available pressures are used. This includes political, economic, social, and military, occurs in low-intensity conflict involving actors from all networks. Non-combatants are tactical dilemmas, lack of hierarchy, small in size, spread out network of communication and financial support. So in this terminology, I think about the, the fortification of 2020 that we had heard about. As in this post-mortem Time Magazine piece, the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. And I think about the numerous groups sent to campaign in Ukraine using all forms of influence to alter the geopolitical situation in that region and the economic tactics of the international community hindering Russia from using the appropriate means of trans-border payments. And so with that in mind, we go to the next type of warfare. We have fifth generation warfare. 5GW is warfare that is conducted primarily through non-kinetic military actions such as social engineering, misinformation, cyber attacks, along with the emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and fully autonomous systems. Fifth generation warfare has been described by Daniel Abba as the war of information and perception. There is no widely agreed upon definition of fifth generation warfare, and it has been rejected by some scholars, including William Lind, who is one of the original theorists of fourth generation warfare. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and return to these tweets. So the first tweet I took note of was Jojo from Jurors. The Republican Party owns this heinous attack on Paul Pelosi from the Charlottesville to January 6th, from don't retreat, instead reload, to stand back and stand by, from the plot to kill Whitmer to the gallows bill to hang Mike Pence. They've been stoking violence all along. Uh, you can read my response, but it's not really relevant to our discussion here. Austin says, reporter on a hot mic after San Francisco police press conference regarding Paul Pelosi on a phone with boss. Hey, so is this the dude that is a former nudist dude? Yeah. Okay. Is it okay for to say any of that stuff? Go ahead and play that. The dude that uh, that uh, was a former like uh, nudist dude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm. Is it okay to say any of that stuff? Nope. Yeah. Nope. It's not okay to say that. You got to maintain a narrative. We can't allow any inconvenient facts to leak out. NPR broke. The assailant who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband in their home was searching for her and shouted, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? A source briefed in the matter tells NPR. Who's a source? And then shortly after, NBC Bay Area reported, update, Nancy Pelosi's office says Paul Pelosi underwent surgery, not brain surgery, after Friday's attack, to which Catter quote tweeted, the bullshit is running deep. Jackson stated, the FBI visits Berkeley home tied to Pelosi beating suspect. The Victorian is dubbed a hippie collective by neighbors. There's an interesting picture in the window here. Let's check that out. This is in the window of his home, but this is uh, all due to conservative radicalization, right? You know, like what the Washington Post says, right? You know, look what the AP tells us. In the mayor of Jared, I can already feel, I can totally towards political disintegration has been chosen yet again. It is time on a violent attack on the husband of the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi less than two weeks before Election Day. It's important for us to determine this is really politically motivated. The police dispatched to Paul Pelosi's home had found. 
Northern Four Car, A Priority 910, 2640 Broadway, Cross of Scott and Normandy. Hey, we're 14 hour copy. RP stated that there's a male in the home and that he's going to wait for his wife. RP stated that he doesn't know who the male is, but he advised that his name is David and that he is a friend. RP sounded somewhat confused. Is a friend. RP sounded somewhat confused. Hmm. So he's a friend. Is this true? Is a friend the same thing as a violent man who broke into the family home? A stranger? Is that a friend? Interestingly, the Paul Pelosi story is like already off of the Daily Beast front page. What's going on there? This is a really important story. Why, why is it off the front page? Here is a story that they had. Conspiracy adult intruder allegedly tried to tie up Paul Pelosi, asked where's Nancy. 42-year-old suspect, a hemp jewelry maker who reportedly shared conspiracy theories online. Reportedly. By who? He shared C-word conspiracy theories online. He was a nude activist. It's interesting. A Berkeley located nude activist with a sign, Berkeley stands united against hate in his window. Somehow broke into the home of the third person in line to the presidency's spouse in the morning at 2.27 a.m. And then you get this confused report of how the assailant, David DePepe, encountered Mr. Pelosi. Police witnessed both were holding a hammer when they arrived. The suspect pulled the hammer away from Mr. Pelosi and violently assaulted with him with it in front of the officers. So there was a chance to intervene that didn't occur. Our officers immediately tackled the suspect, disarmed him, and took him to custody, requesting emergency backup. And then there's this weird part where Pelosi was admitted to the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. I do not remember the San Francisco General Hospital being called the Zuckerberg Hospital. I don't know what's going on there, but it just kind of stuck out to me. It's almost like we're in some kind of weird timeline divergence or something. We're in the Zuckerberg timeline where the guy turned to a robot and now his influence is everywhere. I'm just kidding. Oh, and here we get um, a, a message from De Pepe's stepmother, Teresa De Pepe. She told the Daily Beast, David has always had an opinion. I'm one of these people who thinks everybody has an opinion. I was raised with sticks and stones would break your bones, but words will never hurt you. She said. But hammers are not words. Going further into his Daily Beast article, she said her stepson chose to stay in BC I assume British Columbia, with Jean, when Jean divorced to Pepe's mother. His only sibling, his sister, moved away, she said. Pepe eventually moved to California, got married, and had kids. Describing her shock, the news of her stepson's arrest, Jean told CNN, his son followed a love interest to California about 20 years ago. So this kind of sort of speaks against it being a um, men who have sex with men type of situation, but it doesn't totally rule it out, obviously. I only have him as a good kid. Teresa told the Daily Beast before getting off the phone to call San Francisco PD, saying she wanted to speak to De Pepe first before commenting further. Although at this point, he's not a kid anymore. De Pepe appears to have sold hemp jewelry, though the website for his business is currently down. His only tweet reads, Mushroom hemp necklaces and contains a broken link. His Pinterest page contains broken links to several multicolored necklaces. Pepsi's last known address was in Berkeley, California, where he lived with nude activist Gypsy Tubb, best known for her nude nuptials in San Francisco, where De Pepe served as the best man. In a moment of even-handedness, I will comment that the author of this particular article notes that assaults are up 11% this year in San Francisco and robberies are up 5%, although burglary has actually fallen significantly in 2022, according to statistics on the police department's website. And so this is just noting that there are situational factors in that town that would increase the likelihood of violence against a given individual. Not that everything has to be some kind of political conspiracy. Lisa Christine brings up this rather interesting way of the reporting police officer conveyed information about the attack. He explains that Paul Pelosi was struck once and then he proceeds to chastise any perpetrator attacking politicians and actually starts crying. Struck at least one time and that's what we know. We also know based on our investigation at this point, that this was not a random act. This was intentional and it's wrong. Our elected officials are here to do the business of their cities, their counties, their states, and this nation. Their families don't sign up for this to be harmed. And it is wrong. And everybody should be disgusted about what happened this morning. With that, we will take any questions and we will only answer what we can answer. He might be an authenticity user in a Myers-Briggs apology system. Chuck Castillo noted, 
yesterday. Police audio of the welfare check call about Paul Pelosi identifies he called David a friend who seemed confused. Turn on the TV, corporate media doing their best to tie this guy to politics and the GOP. Raheem noted, yo, what kind of home invasion include bathroom breaks? Then quoting political, Paul Pelosi was able to dial 911 himself after telling the intruder he had to go use the bathroom and then calling from there where his phone had begun charging, according to a person familiar with the situation. He was hospitalized after the attack at Zuckerberg San Francisco General, where he successfully underwent surgery to repair a skull fracture and serious injuries to the right arm and hands. Catterd commented, remember, if two guys in their underwear get into a hammer fight at 2 a.m., it's Trump's fault. And this is in reference to reporting that the assailant was in underwear. Now, I don't know if Paul was in underwear, but apparently David was reported to have been in underwear. And as far as the fifth generational warfare stratagems are concerned, John Cooper used the event as fuel, as many online pundits have used, to try to persuade in this hyper-political, hyper-competitive environment. He states, the man who violently attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband with a hammer yesterday, fracturing his skull, was deeply immersed in a world of far-right conspiracies, anti-Semitism, and hate. Who else is not surprised that extremist MAGA rhetoric has led to political violence? Joe, Republicans are getting worse. Benny Johnson notes that also in a political article, there may have been a third party. David DePape forced his way into the home through a back entrance, Scott said. Officers arrived at the house, knocked on the front door, and were led inside by an unknown person. Hmm. They were discovered, they discovered Papa and Pelosi struggling for a hammer after they instructed them to drop the weapon. So now we know at least there's just one hammer, not two. Charlie Kirk asked a question. Why did Paul Pelosi's alleged attacker, a nudist Green Party activist, go off the grid for years and then start posting Q rants just a few weeks ago? And so that takes us to the political queen, Hillary Clinton, who in her desire to use any tragedy as political fuel for the Democrat party, states, The Republican Party and its mouthpieces now regularly spread hate and deranged conspiracy theories. It is shocking, and not surprising, that, that violence is the result. As citizens, we must hold them accountable for the words and the actions that follow. And to this, Elon replied, There's a tiny possibility there might be more to the story than meets the eye. And he posts a link to this article which I can't access because apparently there are too many people trying to access it right now, obviously, because uh, Elon posted it, which is kind of funny. You can see within the article, there was a mention of San Francisco gay bars closing at two and Pelosi may have been drunk again. So <laughs> this is a really controversial thing here. Let's see if there are any quotes that people are, are posting down below. Um, Eliza states, uh, the article says, and the reposted videos include accusations such as FBI covering up child R, Michael Malice comments, careful Elon, John Fetterman corrected Hillary Clinton once, once. Gateway Pundit has been on this story. Here they report, two far right websites attributed David to Pepe to smear conservatives were fabricated. David was found with Paul Pelosi early Friday morning in his underwear at the Pelosi home by police in San Francisco. The mainstream media immediately tried to cover for the Pelosi family. They then attempted to align the man in his underwear found with Paul Pelosi as a conservative, but it was all a lie. Fox News reported on the website reportedly connected to DePape. Facebook disabled DePape's profile early Friday and declined to answer questions. Hmm, I wonder why. That's interesting. At least two online blogs under DePape's name were stalked and posts from the year 2007 and 2022 speaking of censorship, Big Brother and pedos. One contained calls for violence and anti-Semitic content. It was not immediately clear that he was responsible for the posts, and San Francisco police did not immediately respond to questions about the Papa's online presence. LA Times also reported as well. In months before, police accused him of attacking House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband Friday morning. David had been drifting further into the world of far-right conspiracies, anti-Semitism, and hate, according to the Times review of his online accounts. In a personal blog, posts include such topics as manipulation of history, holo hoax, and it's okay to be white. He mentioned 4chan, a favorite message board of the far right. He posted videos about conspiracies involving, you know what, and the war in Ukraine being a ploy for the Jays to buy land. The Pape's screen included posts about Q, an unfounded theory that former President Trump at war with the cabal of worshiping elites who run child 
Hacks, you know what, Control the World. In August 23rd, there's an entry titled Q, and later, either Q is Trump himself or Q is a deep state mole within Trump's inner circle. The Times went on to say, the Pepe followed a number of conservative creators online, including Tim Pool, Glenn Beck, Daily Wire, and Epoch Times. He also followed an account on YouTube called Blackpilled and reposted several of its videos in his blog. The problem is the website cited by the mainstream media that were supposedly aligned with the Pape were created on Friday and they're no longer active today, Saturday. Um, okay, so looking at this, we are shown a way back entry uh, with a list of entries for Friday, the 29th, and no entries prior, which is interesting. The other site listed, friends, friendlyfriends.com blog, is no longer active. It too was created on Friday and shut down Saturday. Um, okay, so looking at this way back entry and looking at this one, now I don't immediately conclude that that means the website was created on these days. It could be that whoever is responsible for this political plot actually contacted the Wayback Machine uh, company, Internet Archive, and requested that the previous entries get removed. This is something that can be done, and I discovered it um, accidentally when I uh, covered the topic of P-scores being applied to YouTube creators and how you can actually find the rankings for ad friendliness on the Wayback Machine, uh, Google then actually went ahead and deleted the entries for a certain period of time where that was possible after I stupidly tagged them on Twitter. I guess if it wasn't me, it would have been someone else. Um, so I, I do take that this blank time period before Friday is supportive of the notion that this is a political job of some sort, that to frame things in a certain way, which would mean it's an example of fifth generational warfare. However, exactly what happened is not entirely clear. What I don't know is if the web crawlers actually increase your activity if the website becomes popular. So let's say around 5 p.m. 1700, this website started to become really popular. So then because of that, the web crawlers start to record images of the pages. Sometimes you can have really unpopular blogs and the web crawler won't really create archives at appropriate intervals because they're so unpopular. So there are aspects of this that aren't entirely clear, but I think uh, overall this is suggestive. And then the fact that both of the blogs went down is also suggestive. Yeah, Gateway Pundit also notes that Elon Musk fact-checked Hillary Clinton. It's a hugely interesting move, especially given the fact that Elon's already in the news for purchasing Twitter. So this is creating a huge monkey wrench into the narrative. Very interesting, far-ranging story with many questions. I may have covered a bit too much detail. I'll try to edit this down. Now, if you enjoyed waiting through this with me, I invite you to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll meet again on the flip side. Peace.